America is one of the world's great leaders. Today, let's explore how this once small nation became a world powerhouse in spite of constant internal drama on the Fat Man's Guide podcast. Chapter 7, How America Became America. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, again, this is my third podcast in three days, uh, as I tried to promise at the beginning of the long weekend. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, before we get things started, I want to remind you that the podcast is now on iTunes and Google Play. We'd love you to go to find it. Of course, you can go back to Podbean, uh, which is actually where I produce this from. Uh, even if you've been listening to other providers or have been watching on YouTube, and I know a lot of you guys watch on YouTube, and thank you for that, uh, please go to iTunes and leave a review. Um, you know, Give me five stars. I would love that. Um, and uh, th remember, that's how my podcast is going to spread, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. And also remember, I'd love you guys to leave comments if there's anything you'd like me to be able to talk about. I know a couple of you have, and I've made a couple podcasts for that. Matter of fact, today's podcast is in response to that. And remember, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. So, um, as we're getting things going on here, folks, I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, my friend Kat, uh, who's kind of an exchange student here in uh, America, um, she uh, and I have had a number of conversations about uh, other countries around the world and America and just kind of comparing things. And she made a request that I kind of talk about, you know, the history of what made uh, our American um, social structure that we have now, which... <laughs> is more than a 15 minute podcast and so i'm going to kind of try to run through stuff um and there might be some things i'm going to talk about that i'll say hey if you guys are really that interested let me know and i'll make another podcast of that because uh, i don't want to go super in depth i could literally spend an hour and a half talking uh, about uh, american history uh, and how we created this society because again i'm a sociologist i'm a social studies teacher i've been teaching uh, you know u.s history government and politics is really where i spend the bulk of my time for you know, heading on 20 years now. So, um, like I said, I could talk about this all day. And and where I really want to start with you guys is uh, we got to start at the beginning. I teach my students that if you want to understand people and you want to understand, uh, like, our society, we have a lot of drama in our society. The American society, a lot of people, oh, we're split apart. Ugh, I don't buy that. If you look at our history for the last 200 plus years, Honestly, we're not that different right now than we've been in other time periods. I know some of you are going to go, no, that's wrong. Everything is so terrible. No, there has always been drama. You've just never paid attention to it. Because some of you guys are finally paying attention to things that are going on because of, well, particular things or presidents, you know, that we have. And uh, so now, you know, we are looking at a system that is in place. And I think if you want to understand it, you've got to understand the drama. And if you got to understand the drama, you better understand the history. What When you guys were in high school, middle school, and uh, there was always drama, and, and you would go to someone and go, but why did that happen? And they go, well, let me tell you the story. Well, that's the study of history, and that's kind of what we're going to do here today. So let's start out talking about what makes an American an American. The number one thing that makes an American an American is we all have a big arse chip on our shoulder. All of us do. Now, where does that come from? Simple. It comes from the fact that we ain't supposed to be here. See, most Americans, the bulk of us, um, either came over here on a boat because we were a loser, all right? We didn't succeed in Europe. We came over here because we were religious and were not accepted, all of us Christian Protestants out there. Or we came over here because maybe we were marginally successful but could never reach our true potential. And so therefore we decided instead of being a marginal businessman in Europe, we decided we wanted to be rich and famous by going to the new world. And that's largely what happened. Or you were a group of people that were put on a boat in Africa and you were brought to America. Or you're from a very small group of people who used to actually live here. And then everyone else showed up. And so there's really three groups of individuals that make up the American populace. Those who are already here, those who chose to come here, or those who had no choice in coming here. Now, in understanding all that, once we got here, folks, there's really kind of three things that line up um, with America. So we've already got a chip on our shoulder. And any of you guys who've ever felt like a loser know that if you feel like you've got a chip on your shoulder, um, anytime someone's talking, are they talking about me? All right, that's America. You really honest with yourself, that's America. We feel like people are always out to get us. We feel like people are always trying to set us up. People are always trying to come after us because that's the loser mentality that we have in America. 
Now, there is a problem. No, I shouldn't say there's a problem. There is a side effect of that, and that is people who are losers are highly defensive. And that's America, too. All right? America's like that guy at the bar who when someone looks at him, go, what, are you looking at me? What do you want? That's America. I mean, that's like, I'm going to say this. is how the world looks at America. Okay? So, with that being said, number one, we got a chip on our shoulder. All right? Number two, we do have internal strife. And there's the reason for this is because... The bulk of us are really here for two reasons. Um, number one, uh, we wanted to be economically successful, or number two, we wanted religious freedoms. You see a lot of this um, when we go to war. Our first war with Great Britain, guys, we went to war, why? We went to war because of economics. Um, they started imposing taxes and limiting us where we could sell our stuff, and we have no interest in that. We were here to make money, okay? And when they did that, we started a war, and, and I won't get in-depth into the war or anything, because like, I just don't have the time. But um, we're going to end up winning that war by outlasting the greatest military on planet Earth. We weren't supposed to win, all right? And war becomes very important. I mean, a war is unbelievably important for us. I mean, we're America. We're violent anyways. We love violent activities. During the Great Depression, what two, what two sports and activities just blew up? Boxing and football. Because we are a violent nation by nature, all right? No matter what anyone wants to say. This war, guys, we end up fighting this war. We end up winning it. And we weren't supposed to. So there, now all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, we're losers, but we beat you. And we come together and we try to create this new government, okay? And government becomes very important here in a second. And when we create this government, um, a lot of people, you know, I talk about what are the great documents to give you guys your freedoms in America. And, of course, one of the first things people say is Declaration of Independence. Uh, no, Declaration of Independence is totally worthless. It is basically a breakup note with Great Britain. That's the only value it has. It does nothing for us otherwise. And then people talk about the U.S. Constitution. Well, no, the U.S. Constitution doesn't. And I'm going to explain this in a second for all you guys that are going, You're a moron! You don't even know what you're talking about! The gun! No, just give me a second, all right? So what ended up happening was, is when we were creating this structure, we created something called the Articles of Confederation. That's the first actual um, letter of the law in America. But the problem was it, it wasn't any good. And the reason it wasn't any good is because it gave all the power to the states. It didn't give any power to the federal government. It was created by one Thomas Jefferson, and that becomes very, very important here in a second. Because Thomas Jefferson, one of our great founding fathers, unbelievably intelligent lawyer guy, but he had some issues with making friends. Because he was so arrogant, a lot of people didn't like him. Well, long story short, uh, the rest of the founding fathers, the Ben Franklins of the world and all these guys, they said, Ugh, this thing sucks. So they ended up uh, taking it, tearing it up, which upset Thomas Jefferson, and then they created the U.S. Constitution. Now, now I can explain this to you. The U.S. Constitution did not give you, the people, any rights. The U.S. Constitution, which was passed in 1787 and ratified and put into power in 1788, gave no protections of freedoms to the people. How do I know this? Because Thomas Jefferson created a group of people who did not like it. They, the states didn't like it, and they didn't like it for people's rights, and they called them the Anti-Federalists. The Anti-Federalists hated Thomas Jefferson hated the Constitution. That's why I always laugh when I listen to the pundits on TV talk about, and the founding fathers created the U.S. Constitution and everyone loved it and it made... No, no. Matter of fact, you have two political parties in America because of the Constitution. Straight up fact, no doubt, because of the Constitution. See, what ended up happening was is people like Thomas Jefferson decided that there are no right protection for the people, so we need you to create a series of amendments. The first 10 amendments added to the U.S. Constitution are called the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights was passed in 1789. The Bill of Rights, the First Amendment right to your freedom of speech, Second Amendment right so you guys can have your guns, all right, all that good stuff, that was not in the Constitution originally. It was two years later. And it was created by Thomas Jefferson and the Anti-Federalists, okay? Now, when that was put in place, then you folks got freedoms and rights. Matter of fact, I'm going to argue with you right now. The Bill of Rights is the single most important document ever created in American history. More important than the Constitution. You're going to go, what's in the con The Constitution structures how the federal government is going to work and how it relates with the states. That's it. That's what the original Constitution was all about. The Bill of Rights was added two years later because of the... 
the original uh, group, the Anti-Federalists, which, to jump ahead, the Anti-Federalists are going to become a group of individuals called the Democratic Republicans, and today you know them ultimately as the Republican Party, but it's actually a much longer history than that. Um, if you guys want, uh, put a comment down below and tell me if you guys want me to tell you about how political parties were actually constructed. And of course, that other group of individuals will become what are called Democrats. Um, those are big uh, federal government-loving people, constitutionalists. They're people who like the Constitution, the way it was structured, giving power to the federal government. Um, now, with that being said, so now we have political parties. We have political strife. Um, we have a group of individuals, women and minorities, who have no rights or influence. We have an economy that is starting to blossom and bloom because we want to make that money. And so we have these very religious people. We have people that are just about making money. Uh, we have people that feel like they're being pushed down. We have people who are all about states' rights. And, and the reason you got to understand that about the Constitution, guys, is when we get to the Civil War, the Civil War is really misunderstood. A lot of people will tell you that, well, the Civil War was about slavery. Well, it is and it isn't. It is about slavery indirectly. Directly what the, the Civil War is really about is states' rights. It's those anti-federalists who hate the constitutionalists. The anti-federalists argued that they did not have the right in the federal government to come in and tell states they couldn't have slaves. So yes, it is slavery indirectly. And so when we have the Civil War, it's all about states' rights. It's all about that original constitution, all right, which people have to start understanding is not just this great document that everyone loved. No, your original Civil War ultimately links back to the U.S. Constitution. So now we got states' rights people, all right? We've got big federal government people. We have all these other folks going on. And so we have this chip on our shoulder, okay? The one thing that pulls us together, guys, is war. We love war in America. We love violence. Through all of these social issues we have, why do you think we go to war so much? I mean, our first war, we won by not losing, okay? Uh, our second war, the War of 1812, we won by not losing, uh, but that proved to Great Britain, the strongest military in the world, that they couldn't mess with us. We then end up uh, basically developing a professional military, all right, which turned us into the most powerful military on the planet. By the time we got to the Mexican War in the 1850s, folks, um, if you've ever played Mortal Kombat when they have flawless victory, that was the Mexican War. Folks, my favorite stat of the Mexican War, more U.S. soldiers died of diarrhea than died of gunshot wounds. That's a true fact. Go look it up. That's how really efficient we were. Of course, we got into the Civil War. Um, it changes a lot of things. And then after that, um, as America comes back into military conflict, we're dealing with our own internal strife. We're really focusing on ourselves. Then we get into World War I, right? And here's, here's the quick version of World War I. Um, Europe fought over uh, two sets of trenches over the span of about 100 yards for four years. They didn't move. Uh, machine machine guns were first a big hit. Everyone's getting their head blown off. You stick your head out of the trench. And finally, America gets involved. Once America gets involved, folks, it takes about seven months for us to end the war. Because we don't like to sit around a trench. We romanticize war. All right? We're America. Right? When we get into something, the war ends. So what happens? Seven months later, the war ends because we jump out of those trenches, run into the gunfire because we romanticize it. And we end up winning that war. We then get into World War II. Now, of course, at first, we don't want to get into World War II. We just want to sell both sides, uh, weapons, ammunition, cars, uh, oil, gas, everything else, make a lot of money. That helped us get out of the Great Depression, by the way. But of course, eventually, once uh, some morons uh, in some islands decided they were going to bomb Hawaii, that got us into the war, as they like to say, awoken a sleeping giant. And it only took a couple years, and we're done with this war. We took care of wars on two different fronts. America! See, we have a lot of pride in the fact that whenever you have America, yeah, we're split. It's kind of like in your family, right? In your family, you're always fighting. But has anyone ever picked a fight with one of your family members? Ooh, that turns bad. Because here's the thing. I can beat the hell out of my brother, but you can't beat the hell out of my brother. And in American history... One of the reasons that you can see where we're at is we're always going to have internal strife. We always have had internal strife. But anyone who comes after America is asking for a whole hell of a lot of problems. Because we will come together under that flag, that national... That's why we love the Olympics, guys. I mean, come on now. How many people are sitting there in the winter watching curling? That's the broomy thing with the stick thing on the ice going, Dude, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it! Because we just got to beat Canada. 
all right? We all come together whenever we feel like we're under attack, when it's everyone else against America. And that's what happened in war, all right? War brings us together. Matter of fact, there's a lot of uh, historians or conspiracy theorists who will argue that that's why we go to war. Because when we need to have America put together, if you have a good war, that, that brings us together like nothing else. So the thing is, we've got this country filled with eternal strife. We've got two political parties that forever, since the beginning of time, thanks to the Constitution and how it was constructed, are constantly at odds with each other. And the last thing that we really have in America is, up until the 1950s, we really believed the government was there for us, to protect us, help us, take care of us. Well, the reality is, is by the time you get to the late 60s, early 70s, we've had the JFK assassination, you know, three bullets, eight bullet hole wounds. Um, you've had the Vietnam War where they're constantly lying to us every single day. What's going on? You know, you have Otbine Mountain where we fight for friggin' five, six days, get 75% of the people wounded or killed, then give the help after one day. You have the Watergate scandal with Richard Nixon. You have, uh, again, the Iran-Contra scandal in the 80s with uh, Reagan. And what we, we start realizing as American people is we've got a bunch of dirtbags in office and we can't trust them. And so look at COVID-19. No, oh, there's something the government's not telling us. That all comes from there. Because, see, we've got a chip on our shoulder and we're always defensive. And we've got all these people, Republicans and Democrats, fight with each other, blaming each other instead of getting together and working. And we pick sides. And that's what constructed the system we have in place today in America. All right? And now when you have all these conspiracy theories, you have everyone looking at it from a political standpoint, all right? You have our rich religious tradition and the fact that we got to make money open the economy. That's what makes us the way we are today, guys. In a really quick version. Like I said, I apologize. I'm trying to keep it under 20 minutes. Um, you know, if there's you know certain aspects about what I just covered there, leave a comment down below and I will make a video for you. I could talk about this stuff all day. Hey, guys. Um, thanks for uh, listening today. I hope that was at least a little bit in informational and kind of teaching you a couple things. Um, I had a blast doing it. Um, as always, like I said, leave a comment. Let me know if there's something else I can cover. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. I'd love you to share it. Um, and, and, of, and of course, go on to uh, iTunes and leave a comment. Leave a, a, a you know some kind of a, a like. Give me five stars. And, uh, and, and as always, guys, I appreciate you being here. Um, remember to live life to the fullest without excuses, even in crazy times like these. See ya.